Praise the Lord. Would you stand tonight? We're going to want you to worship the Lord with us in song. Amen.
Thank you so much. Good to see you tonight. You know, the Bible says that the children of Israel, they knew the acts of God because they saw the miracles. They saw the, you know, the water come from the rock and manna from heaven. They knew the acts of God, but Moses knew the way of God. So there's a big difference, isn't it? Knowing the way of God. The way we get to know the way of God is through His Word. Amen. You ready to give tonight? Brother Warren, come down here and pray over this offering tonight, if you would, please, sir. Praise God. Got your gift ready? I see Brother Warren's got his gift ready. Praise God. Ready to give. Let's pray over it. Uh, he's coming on up the steps. That's good. <laughs> Amen. God's good, isn't He? Father, we thank you for this night, this day. We thank you for your love, your mercy to us. Thank you for the ones that can give. The Lord just said, we'll give and we give unto you and you'll give back pressed down and shaken together. Jesus, we thank you for everything you do in our lives. Amen.
Wave at somebody, or shake a hand, or hug a neck, or whatever. <laughs> Good to see you tonight. Lois said it was cold in here. How many of you cold? Cool. It's cool. Well, I, you might be by yourself, Lois. So just just change from there to over here. See if that'll help. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Randy. Praise God. Brother Randy, like a young man. Warren walked up them steps like he was a young man a while ago, did And I know he's, a, he's about my age. We're about the same. And, uh, and so we're still young, right, Brother Warren? <laughs> I don't know if you knew it or not, but Brother Warren was an all-star football player in high school. Yes, sir. He was, he was all-star. He could play some football. And... Uh, I love to see people enjoy life and enjoy good health. God wants us to enjoy life and have good health. Amen. Well, tonight I'm going to teach on faith, the ABCs of faith and faith 101. This makes about the sixth or seventh lesson I've taught on that, and I'm going to try to finish it up tonight. <clears throat> but I do hope this series has been a blessing to you. So we're talking about the ABCs of faith. Now, that's like the beginning, but I believe that it's very relevant to us today to make it applicable in our own lives. Now, 1 John 5, 4 says what? We went over it many times. Whatsoever is born of God <coughs> overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world. So this tells me with our faith we can overcome the world. I like victory. How many of you like victory? I don't like defeat. I like victory. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. So we know that our faith puts us in a position of victory. And that makes us more than conquerors. Say, I'm a winner. Now 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says what? For we walk by faith and not by sight or our five physical senses. So when you leave here tonight, I would advise you to keep your eyes open so you don't stumble into somebody or hit something, hurt yourself or hurt somebody else. So in the natural here, we need to use our physical senses many times. But when it comes to the realm of faith and spiritual things and appropriating the things from heaven, we walk by faith and not by sight. And the Bible says in Romans 1.17 that the just shall live by faith. Then we found out in Hebrews 11.6, without faith is what? Impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek us. So we see that faith also is a rewarder. 1 Timothy 6.12 says we're to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. And I like that phrase, lay hold on eternal life, because most people, they, they just think of fighting and fight the good fight of faith. And we should, and we have to, and we desire to. But lay hold of eternal life. That means you don't have to wait till you get to heaven to get everything. That eternal life starts now. The life of God, the blessings of God, uh, begins now in our life when you get born again. Isn't that good? And so the first thing we looked at how do we develop our faith? We looked at this, and we didn't get beyond this, but I'm going to just go back and briefly touch this to bring you up to, uh, to par with what we left off, and then we'll go on to some other points, and hopefully I can finish this message tonight. But number one, we said you have to meditate that God loves you. You have to meditate on the fact in God's Word that He loves you because it's really hard to have faith in somebody that you really don't believe love you. Isn't that true? So you have to know that God loves you just as much as you know your name. You have to be convinced that God loves you. Though you may have failed, you made some mistakes, you made some wrong choices, that kind of thing. But you know, God will honor our faith. And you cannot develop faith 
when you're not convinced that God loves you? How many of you are convinced that God loves you? And so the Bible said, for God so loved the world. Now, God didn't love the world, the world system. But he's talking about humanity. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. How many of you are persuaded that God loves you? And you're persuaded that Jesus went to the cross, the Son of God, shed his blood so that you and I can have eternal life. How many of you have experienced that eternal life? Uh, uh, Jesus told uh, uh, Nicodemus, you must be born again. You know, a lot of people join a church and they've been water baptized and they put their name on the church and they do all of that. But you know, the only way you can assure your relationship with God and a ticket to heaven is to be born again. You have to be born again. And so we have to understand that God really loves us. Then in Romans 5, 8, we also discover that he demonstrated his love towards us. He didn't just say, I love you. He demonstrated it. You know, if somebody says, I love you, but they don't ever show any love or demonstrate it toward you, you know, you begin to doubt their love, right? But God demonstrated his love toward us. So that's the first point we talked about, and now we're going to move on to the second point. And that is, you have to meditate on God's Word every day. You have to meditate on this Word every day because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Joshua 1.8 says what? This book of the law shall not depart from thine eyes, for thou keep them in the midst of the heart that they may observe to do all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and have good success. And Psalms chapter 1 verse 2 says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law does he meditate day and night. That means he meditates in the word. Proverbs 4, 20, 21 and 22. My son, attend unto my words. Incline thine ears unto my saying. Let them not depart from thy heart, but keep them in the midst of it. For they are life to those that find him and help to all their flesh. Now, isn't that something that the word of God will bring healing to all your flesh? Not just your organs in your body, but it'll bring healing to your head. A lot of people need a little, little head work there. It'll bring healing to our head, to our arms, to our shoulders, to our fingers. I mean, he covers the whole body to all your flesh. In other words, there's nothing that God can't heal. He's a healer. How many of you know him as a healer? See, we know his love, but do you know him as your healer? I know him as my Savior, but have you known him as your healer? God is a healer. And number three, let's go on to that, trying to finish. Develop, how do you develop your faith? You must confess the word. You have to speak God's word out of your mouth. Hear your own self speaking the word of God. And that word goes in you, into your ears, and then it enters into your heart so that you can operate by faith with the spoken word. You hear yourself say it. So that's how one way you can develop your faith is by the spoken word. Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty two, 22, what did he say? Have faith in God. Then what did he say in Mark eleven twenty three? Whosoever shall say unto this mountain and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. He said you could speak to your mountain, you speak to this mountain. Mountains represent your problem. So I like to say it this way. Your mountain needs to hear your voice. I said your mountain needs to hear your voice. You know, it's important to hear the voice of maybe you listen to Kenneth Hagin or Kenneth Copeland or Fred Price or or Creflo Dollar or Jesse Duplantis or whoever you listen to. It's good to hear their voice, but your mountain needs to hear your voice. So we need to speak the word of God because that's how faith comes. Faith comes by the spoken word of God. 
All right? Number four, you develop your faith by right association. Your association will hinder your faith or it will develop your faith. You got to be around the right people in, in order for your faith to develop. Right association. If you're a Joshua, find a Caleb. I mean, everybody else is speaking negative, but you're speaking God's word and you keep saying what God says. And you keep believing what God says he believes. Regardless of what it looks like, you keep saying God's word and your association, the people you hang with, you know they're speaking the word. Because that builds your faith. You hang around people that's negative all the time, it'll tear your faith down. So we need to hang around positive people. People that will speak God's word. I mean, you know, you can, be, you can be having a good time and you can be sitting with several people and you're talking the word and then somebody come in and real negative and got a bad attitude. I mean, it changes the whole atmosphere, doesn't it? So make sure you hang around positive speaking people that speak the word. I mean, God said, look, look, Caleb and Joshua, they got a different spirit about them. I mean, they're going into the promised land. See, they're, they're encouraging one another. They're the only two that went into the promised land. The rest of the, 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 the people were talking negative and they didn't go into the promised land because they were talking negative. But Caleb and Joshua kept on speaking God's word and they sharpened, sharpened one another. Iron sharpened it sh- iron. And so we have to speak God's word and when we talk God's word and the solution, we're encouraging them and not pulling them down. I don't like to be pulled down. I want to get away from that. I want to get out of anybody's presence, start talking negative. I say, bye, see you later, alligator. You know what I mean? After a while, crocodile, let's go. Because it will pull your faith down. Number five, you need to learn how to act on word of, the word of God. You develop your faith by acting on the word of God. James said you got to be a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. Are you listening? Jesus said, if you act on the word, you'll be like a man that dug deep in the earth, built his house, and when the storms came, that house did not fall. Why? Because he acted on the word of God. What does the word, acting on the word of God, what does it do? It causes our faith to work when you act on the word of God. And every time your faith works, you are developing your faith. When you see that your faith is producing, it'll make you get happy. And we need some happy Christians. Amen. Everybody smile at me. At least I think you're happy tonight. I think, you, think you're getting something out of this if you just smile. But we ought to be happy. We ought to be pleasant people. We ought to be joyful folks. Look, I come to tell you, I know you got things out there pulling on you and they're pulling at you. And I know I face the same thing. I mean, we live in the same world, don't we? Same devil is, is after both of us. Bringing his bags of trick. You know, trying to get you discouraged, trying to get you down, make you doubt God's word, get you in a negative mood. He's doing that. But you know what? If you'll speak God's word, you'll build yourself up. You'll develop your faith. You'll get strong in faith. So you got to, you got to speak your faith. And in order to do that, you need to hang around right associations. And you need to act on the word of God. I mean, the word of God says rejoice. He didn't say, now, let me tell you, rejoice when things start going good. I know it's been going bad for you, but I I see a little change coming, so why don't you just start acting happy? No, he said rejoice. That means always. Rejoice always. What does always mean? Always. Always, the definition would be always, right? And so he said, just go ahead and rejoice. You may not feel like it, You may not want to physically and mentally. I mean, you're bombarded with stuff going on. But he said, rejoice. Rejoice. In other words, get happy. We ought to practice getting happy. Anybody ever practice getting happy? Just go, like Brother Hagin said, just go ha, 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 ha. Say that. Ha, 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 ha. You say, that's a fake laugh. Well, look at somebody and see if that is fake. Just look at it. I mean, you know, that's not fake. Go ahead and laugh. I mean, we can, we can just enjoy the presence of God. 
Amen. God wants us to be full of joy. He said that your joy might remain. He don't want you to be happy just one time and then, you know, not happy the rest of the time. He wants you to be full of joy. And it's not based on circumstance. It's based on the Word of God, doing the Word of God, acting on the Word of God, believing the Word of God. Tell somebody, I'm going to rejoice. All right. What's another way we can develop our faith? Well, do a study on God's integrity and faithfulness. God cannot lie. God is faithful. Do a study on God's integrity and the faithfulness of God and you'll come out of that study going, my God is faithful. He'll do exactly what he said he would do. The Bible said he swore by himself. There was no higher to to swear by. In other words, he swore by himself. He made an oath. God cannot lie. There are some things that God cannot do. That's one of them. God cannot lie because he is truth. And you can't have faith in what you're saying if somebody's not telling you the truth. You know, some folks, they lie so much, and then they, they have to tell you, now, I'm telling you the truth this time. That mean the other times you hadn't been? I'm telling you the truth this time. No, you can believe God all the time. He can't lie. So, so develop your faith in the integrity of God's word and the faithfulness of God. How many of you found him to be faithful? He is faithful. He'll do what he said he'll do. Number seven, how do you develop your faith? Belong to a church that teaches the word and believes in miracles. That will help you to develop your faith. You just can't belong to any church and expect your faith to grow. I've been there. When I first got saved, it was a good church, but they didn't teach me nothing about faith, how to develop my faith. And so I didn't grow in faith, very little. You know what helped me when I first got saved as far as growing in my faith? I had an old tape recorder way back there then. You can't imagine that now with the technology we got, but I had this old tape recorder, and you had to buy one of these big microphones. You had to plug it up, and it had a timer on it. And so when I went to church, I would set that timer, and I would tape a program that was coming on my TV. I would tape uh, Rex Humbard every Sunday. I, I tell you, Rex Humbard back there then, I got a lot of good stuff from Rex Humbard. And I learned a lot from Rex Humbard. I mean, I'm just a brand new Christian. But I, when I got home, I, that's the first thing I done. When I got home, I, re, I had recorded that message and I would listen to it. And I listened to it over and over and over and over and over and over. So it's important that we go to a good church, a right church that believes the word of God, that believes in miracles. I believe in miracles. How many of you believe in miracles? God is not dead. He's still doing miracles. He's alive. Amen. So we need to teach that God is a good God and God still does miracles. How many of you believe you're in the right church? I believe I'm in the right church. Now, we've been called an occult. We've been called, you know, they teach false doctrines. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've heard folks, they come up to me and said, uh, uh, so-and-so, uh, they told me, uh, and their bit out was a lie. I said, no, we just teach the word of God. We teach the truth. We teach God's word. And I, and I said, well, let them talk. Let them talk. Let them do whatever they want to. We're just going to keep growing in faith. We're going to keep developing our faith. And faith going to keep working. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You don't just go to any church. I'm telling you, it is important where you go to church. I wish I'd have had a church like this when I first got saved. It made so much difference in my life. But thank God he saw my heart and he knew I was hungry for the word and he introduced me to some ministries like Kenneth Hagin, Kenneth Copeland. See, that was way back there. 
We got other ministers that come on the scene since then. But I mean, way back there, God introduced me to Kenneth Hagin and Kenneth, and I went to ordering every tape I could get from. I mean, every tape I could get from. I had them stacked that high. And I listened to them and I wore them. And you know, I still listen to those tapes right today. I'm telling you, my wife, a very fine idea, almost every night, almost every night, I mean almost every night, we go to bed and the first thing we do is turn on Kenneth E. Hagin. And I, I've heard some of them stories a hundred times, but they never get old to me because they're stories of faith. And it builds my faith and it encourages me. And I get happy about it, praise God. And so we just keep right on Saying the word of God, speaking the word of God. How do you develop your faith? Number eight, hear and read about miracles. You need to read about miracles. I mean, as a young Christian, I got hold of some, some books by Catherine Kuhlman. Man, miracles excited me. And then later on, I got to find out she had a program on TV and she would come out there and I'm telling you, she would show up and, and she didn't really claim to be a good preacher, but she had that anointing, that calling, that gift of healing on her life and she'd come out and miracles start happening. I mean, the sick would get healed, the blind would see, deaf ears wouldn't stop. And I got to reading about Smith Wigglesworth. I mean, a man of strong faith. I mean, I read about all the miracles. And then as a little boy, I, my mind would go back and I watched Oral Roberts on television and I saw these women, you know, come out. I saw other things, but this was so visible. They had these great big gorders. Women used to have gorders, you know. They had a great big gorders. I mean, they were big. And he'd come through that, and they come through that healing line and he put his hand on that gorder. And I mean, you could see this. This is on camera. And right before your eyes, that gorder just... I said, glory to God. I mean, that excited me. And then I would hear people talk about miracles. When I was out at John Osteen's church, I heard a, 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 a man get up and talk about he didn't have but one lung. He had lost a lung. And the x-rays showed where the doctor had taken it out and everything. I mean, the lung is gone. There's no lung there. And he come up in a R.W. Schambach meeting one night. And Brother Schambach laid his hand on him and he said, it was like air pumping up a tire. Said, whoo, 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 whoo. And all of a sudden he started breathing normal. Went back to the doctor and had a brand new lung. The same doctor, not, a, not another doctor, but the same doctor had a brand new lung. God can do anything. Anything we'll believe him for. I believe in a God of miracles. I believe in the miraculous. Glory to God. But you're a miracle. And did you know what? Brother Hagin said this. I quote him a lot because I listen to him a lot. But Brother Hagin said most time what people, how they miss God is they're looking for the spectacular and they miss the supernatural. I mean, if somebody got up out of a wheelchair and ran around church, you go, woo! And we should. But see, we don't get quite so excited when we hear this word being taught like it is right now. But this is a supernatural word. The supernatural is on it all the time. So you're participating in the supernatural when you read this word and you come to church and you hear the word. You're participating in the supernatural. It may not be spectacular at that moment, but it's supernatural power of God. This word has the power to change your life. This word can change. One word from God can change everything. Glory to God. So we got to learn to hear from God. I remember when God spoke to me and told me to come to Nashville. I mean, I was working for Lance Incorporated. And God called me to, to start a church. And so I just, I just quit my job, making the best money I ever made in my life. Somebody asked me, said, why would you quit? I said, because I was making peanuts and in a crummy business. <laughs> <laughs> but I came to Nashville. 
I mean, I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know where we were going to start. I didn't know anything. I just, he just said, go. And just one door opened right after the other. I didn't have, people come to me later on, ministers would come to me and said, you know, they saw our church begin to succeed some, and they said, tell us the secret of your success. I said, how did you start the church? I said, I can't tell you how I started, other than I just heard God say, go to Nashville, and the rest of it began to fall in place. I didn't have to kick no doors down. I didn't have to do anything like that. I just rested in God. I said, God, you know what you're doing. And so my first salary was $25 a week. And I'm used to making, look, I'm used to making, I ain't going to tell you what I made back there then. You might get jealous. Because I made good money. I really did. First job I ever really had that made really good money. Now, I had to work for it. I mean, it didn't come easy. I had to work. But I made good money. And it was hard in the natural to give that up. And you're going for $25. And here me and Lois. How old was Michael? About 10 years old. And so here I am, got a family, got a kid to raise and send to school and buy clothes for and all of that. And, and then, you know, here I am, $25 a week. But you know what? We never missed a meal. You can look at us and tell that. We never missed a meal. We paid all our bills. We never got behind on one. I can't tell you how we did that. And But then God began to bless and the money has begun to come in and I begin to grow with the ministry. And I can tell you I am a blessed man tonight, praise God. I have no wants. I have no needs. God has met every one of my needs. And you know what? He'll meet all of our needs Amen. until the day we die. And we sit around, we worry sometimes how we're going to do this, how we're going to do that financially. But I come to tell you, you got a God that loves you. You got a God that will take care of you. You got a God of miracles. I mean, he'll, he'll get water out of the rock if he has to. He'll rain manna down from heaven. I've told the ushers over the years, I said, now, you know, if you see a, if you see a, God will get it to you. I mean, an unexpected way. I said, if you see a puppy dog come in here and got a brown paper sack tied around his neck, and it's full of money. I said, don't you touch it. You bring it to me. It's mine. God will get it to me. I mean, God's got a lot of ways of getting it to you. We just need to learn to trust God. Believe in miracles. Believe in testimonies. Testimonies will inspire you, right? Testimonies will encourage you. Well, let's stand. I know I got to quit. I know it's time for me to quit. I still didn't quite finish the message, but I'm close enough. I'll probably do something else next time. But I hope this series has been a blessing to you. Because you can't, you can't uh, in my eyes, you can't teach on a better subject than faith. And I want to encourage you, if you don't have this little book right here, get it. It's called God's Creative Power for Healing by Charles Capps. You ever heard of Charles Capps? One of the great faith teachers. Brother Capps went on home to be with the Lord. If he, he, got, he was 80 years old in perfect health. Let me tell you the story because I believe in miracles. Let me show you how this man lived. This man, he lived in perfect health. He got hold of the word of God. He was a Baptist. But he got hold of some truths in God's word and God changed his life and he became a great teacher. He used to teach with uh, Brother Kenneth Copeland and Norval Hayes and, you know, uh, those guys like that. He would go and teach in these crusades and he taught the word of God. But when he got, but before he died, Charles Cowp, he went and told Happy Caldwell, anybody ever heard of Happy Caldwell? A few of us have. Happy Caldwell, was, he was a great pastor, great man of faith. He told Happy, he, he said, I'm going home, and I don't remember the exact date, but it was like, I'm going home this Sunday. He thought he meant he's going back to Arkansas, where he was born. Now, you know, he's from Arkansas. He said, no, 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 I'm going home to be with the Lord. He said, you are? He said, yeah, I'm going home to be with the Lord. And he told his wife the same thing. He said, I'm going home to be with the Lord Sunday. She thought the same thing. He's talking about going back to his home place. Or something. He said, no, I'm going home to be with the Lord. Well, they 
just kind of wrote it off a little bit. Said, I don't know what's happened to Charles. He, he, you know, he's in good health and enjoying life. Well, he got up that Sunday, and he went through his regular routine. And uh, I don't remember the exact detail, but he just, sometime during that Sunday, he sat down in his chair and just bowed his head and went home to be with the Lord. No sickness, no disease. I've had people to tell me, well, you know, you preach on that healing stuff. If you don't never get sick, how you going to die? I say, quit breathing. That'll do. I mean, it works every time. Not some of the time, it works every time. Just quit breathing. He just gave up the ghost. Isn't that what Jesus did? Jesus said, they didn't kill me. He gave up the ghost. He just gave it up. It was his time. He gave up the ghost. And when it comes our time, we don't have to die with all kinds of sickness and disease in our body. We can just give up the ghost. We can just go on and be with the Lord. But anyway, get back to the book. Uh, you get this book. It's, it's full of confession. In fact, make one or two with me. He's got a chapter here that said, God's medicine. And he said, to be spoken by mouth three times a day until faith comes. Then once a day to activate faith. So we need to take this every day. Say, Jesus is the Lord of my life. Jesus is the Lord of my life. Sickness and disease has no power over me. I am forgiven. I am free from sin and guilt. I am dead to sin. I'm alive to righteousness. Jesus bore my sins in his body on the tree. And with his stripes, I am healed. Jesus bore my sickness and carried my pain. Therefore, I give no place to sickness or pain. God sent his word and he healed me. Boy, isn't that good. No evil shall befall me. No plague shall come nigh my dwelling. Glory to God. And he's got, he's got stuff in here. I mean, you can make that your confession. He's got one in here on tumors and arthritis. Said, Jesus bore the curse for me, therefore I forbid growth and tumors in my body. Say that. I forbid any growth and tumors in my body. Any growth will dissolve now in Jesus' name. My blood pressure is 120 over 80. I am healed. From the top of my head to the bottom of my feet to the tips of my finger. Now go ahead and give God some praise in the house tonight. Go ahead, let's praise Him. Come on. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. You want to say something? Okay. Michael's going to have a practice with the singers and all and every what group. Anyway, they're going to meet in the hospitality room right after, sir. So uh, he waiting for me to get through so that y'all can go and get out of there and won't be late. All right? But anyway, thank you for coming tonight. I hope you enjoy this word. Apply these principles and I'll guarantee you to change your life.